What's going on everybody? It's your Fly Tech Guy Mark and I know it's been a while, but today I think I have a really good steal for you guys and that's the Google Pixel 5 come Black Friday or Cyber Monday. If you could find this phone for about $100, $150 to $200 off, I think it's going to be a great deal. It doesn't come at a hefty price tag already and what it gives you is honestly a great package. So let's talk more about why I think you should purchase it this coming holiday. So real quick, let's talk about the back of this phone. It is much different than the Form 4XL. Me, personally, I like it. It is pretty sturdy back. It's not gonna have me worried about dropping it, cracking it. I, uh, you can get now scratches on it a little bit, but they're very, very um, not visible, if that makes sense. And you also have the same camera module as the 4. It's a little bit more tucked into the back of the display, so it doesn't have a giant camera bump. It's almost flush with the back. Obviously, it comes with a fingerprint sensor, not face ID, which isn't too big of a deal for me. I personally like one or the other, not a huge factor. And you do have that pull down notification bar, which I also like. Um, but I think the back is really nice. You get wireless charging, you get reverse wireless charging. It's a different look at the phone and at a style that you can have in a phone. Uh, so I think I like what Google did here, especially for the price. And also, I don't have to worry about cracking my phone, like I said. So I do like the back. Let me know what you guys think about this design of the Pixel, or if you like the 4, 4 XL better. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is battery life, because that's probably the most important thing to a lot of people. And battery life is absolutely great on this phone, and I was shocked. So the Pixel 4 and 4 XL, not very good, right? It was something that I struggled with. It was good in the beginning. I didn't do a lot of stuff on my phone, but as the months went on, I started to do more and more on my phone. So it got a little bit more um, challenging to have this battery life always train. And on this phone right here, I don't have that problem at all. And it starts with a bigger battery, lower resolution screen, and a 765 Snapdragon processor, which is a little bit less power, but very efficient. And it is also 5G capable. So battery life lasts me a very long time. And the most significant thing for me is standby time. I can easily set this phone down, put it in my pocket, put it in my golf bag, go an entire day, four or five hours, pick it back up, and it'll still be at 100%. That's probably the most exciting thing that I've had in a phone for a long time. And I've been a Pixel user ever since the 3XL, and I had a Note 8, which had terrible battery life as well. So this is the best battery phone that I've had uh, since um, probably the Pixel 3 XL, which was not great, but decent. And this one blows all of those out the water. So I'm very excited that this battery life is superb and you will not be disappointed. It's just like the 4A, it's just like the 3A. Extremely long battery life, great standby time with still great perks, right? The 765, not too bad of a processor. I have not seen a power gap. Still have a 90 Hertz refresh rate screen. So I really enjoyed that and you can also power share on this phone. So that just goes to show how much battery you can actually use in this phone. And we'll get more into that later, but just know battery life, I'm giving it an A. So I did mention the screen and the screen is less resolution than the Pixel 4 XL, which I came from. This is a 1080p screen, but it still has that 90 Hertz refresh rate. It's not too big of a deal. The screen is still really nice. Um, I thought the Pixel 4 screen was amazing and I felt the same way with this one. I love the 90 Hertz refresh rate. Now refresh rates aren't huge to me. I don't really care about 120 or straight 90. I think just having something that can go 90 is perfect for me and it still looks extremely smooth. Now I haven't used many 120 Hertz screen displays and I know they're extremely fast and smooth, but I think 90 Hertz right now is good for me and it'll be good for people in this price range as well. Now I did mention the 765 Snapdragon processor and I think that's a perfect chip for this phone. It's extremely efficient, not a big power user, and it's also 5G capable. And I do live in a 5G area, so I do get 5G coverage and I think it's convenient. It's not really a necessity. It's not something that I need. I don't need the widest band 5G. Um, but it is a perk to have 5G. Now I'm not saying buy this phone because it has 5G. 5G is still uh, years out and we're just getting to coverage around the United States. So I think it is important that we start adopting 5G capable things, but it's not a necessity just yet. But like I said, it's very convenient to have. So I do like the 5G accessible um, you know, bands in this phone but I'm not getting the fastest speeds around 200 down, 150 down, and you know, 40 up, 20 up. 
those are good speeds, um, but it's not something that I need. It's just a convenience package here, and I think the 765 also helps the battery life a lot. I'm not seeing a huge drop in power. I know it's not an 865. I know it's not an 855, which is in the Pixel 4 XL, but it's a good chip, and it's going to get you great battery life, great efficiency, and you're still getting to use a pretty powerful chip for a good range. So finally, let's talk about this camera. It's a little bit different than what you get on the 4 and 4 XL and the 4A. This is two cameras, same sensor for the main pixel camera as the 3, so you're not really changing much there. The uh, algorithms are changed a little bit, but um, you know, same sensor and hardware, but you finally get that ultra wide that you've been waiting for, and I think people are going to love it. We've all been waiting to see what Google can do with the ultra wide, and they finally put it in there. So you do have a 0.6 ultra wide lens. I'll little, take a little picture here to see what you guys got. And it looks pretty nice. You do have that one times regular and then two times their uh, super res zoom, where I personally think that those algorithms are great. You get really crisp pictures when you zoom in. Um, you know, it's such a Google thing. They also added a couple more features for video. Now you have more stabilization features like standard, which is you know default for all stabilizing. You have locked, which are for zoom shots. So when you zoom in and you're taking a video and you're just holding it there or putting it on a tripod, it'll lock in and it'll stabilize extremely, extremely well. Then you have a very active uh, stabilization, which is you know when you're running, when you're walking, and you're trying to get a good footage, maybe you're in a bumpy car ride, something like that. That would also be a good stabilization thing to use. And then you have cinematic pan, which is when you're slowly panning to a subject. So Google has stepped up their video game and we've all been waiting for that. It's not great, right? It's still not the best. iPhone obviously holds that, um, but they're stepping it up and we see that they are putting time and effort into getting this better. Um, another thing is Night Sight is now automatic. If it senses that you need night sight, you take the picture and it automatically starts taking the night sight picture for you, which is pretty good. You don't have to go into that setting. Obviously, the front facing camera is a hole punch to the left. It is just a little bit better than the last one. Nothing crazy has changed. I personally like it and that's pretty much it with the camera. Uh, they haven't changed much, but I think they're going in the right direction with the video. Hopefully in the Pixel 6, we will see a bit of a change a little bit of upgrade in the hardware because this hardware is getting a little old and Google is going to need some catching up to start beating these competitors. So that's pretty much it, right? This is a quick review of why I think this is going to be a great steal during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. If you could find this, like I said, 150 off, 200 off, this is a steal. I think this phone starts at around 600 or $700, so if you can get it for $500, I mean, you're getting Google's flagship, which is somewhat of a budget phone for a budget-ish, mid-range-ish price. That's a really good deal, and this still does come with flagship specs. And when I say specs, I don't mean processor, but I do mean battery life. I mean 90 hertz display. I mean 5G. I mean great camera quality. So you're getting a lot of really good things with this phone. You're not just getting some budget phone that is, you know, shying away in one area so that it can explode in another. This is a great phone. You're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna use it a lot, and you're gonna be able to use it all day with an amazing battery life. So it's Google's version of a flagship, but also their version of a lesser flagship, higher mid-range, if that makes sense. Hopefully Google will bring us something cool in the Pixel 6, but I'm telling you, this is a steal for Black Friday. I think if the deals are good, definitely go out and get one. A lot of people are gonna enjoy this phone. Other than that, guys, it's your Flytech guy, Mark, and I will see you in the next one.